I'll start by acknowledging my co-author and colleague who's in the audience all the way from the Central Amazon, uh, João Campos Filho. So basically, human prosperity often backfires and degrades natural ecosystems. So how do we square that circle? How do we leverage an integrated conservation development project that essentially solves all of those uh, big societal and environmental challenges of our times? Um, so, uh, you know, so you have the environmental, the economic, and the, the social. And sustainable development projects in the tropics have uh, pretty much failed on achieving all of those things in the same um, project. So they're still looking for that holy grail. For us, um, the solution, part of the solution is managing the world's most productive freshwater fisheries um, um, on Earth. It's also the, the most species-rich uh, fish fauna. Uh, but when we say managing, we actually mean co-managing, because uh, the local population we work with, uh, local communities, are the actual uh, stars of this show. Uh, and everything we do uh, essentially goes through uh, them, whether they're managing uh, turtles uh, or fish, in our case, uh, big fish. But there is a huge um, value-added uh, meat substitution uh, benefit there because the, in the animal protein sector, the biggest alternative, um, at least in the Brazilian Amazon, is bovine beef, uh, which has been responsible for 83% of all deforestation since the 1970s. And that's about 81 million uh, hectares of forest uh, lost. Never mind the fact that uh, for every kilogram of bovine beef uh, protein, uh, you're emitting uh, nearly 300 kilograms uh, of greenhouse gases, um, whereas fish is essentially carbon neutral. Uh, added to which, uh, every hectare of forest that you convert into cattle pastures uh, gets rid of another uh, 110 tons of uh, uh, CO2 equivalent greenhouse gases. Um, so we work in the Western Amazon, um, in the Juruá uh, Basin, uh, right here. It's a small river basin in the Amazon, but it's still six times the size of Switzerland. Um, and we work along 1,200 kilometers of that river, where we have a bead chain of nearly 450 lakes uh, under varying categories of protection. We have fully protected, um, partially protected, and then open access lakes, um, sort of negotiated all of that with uh, commercial fishermen, subsistence fishermen. Uh, this has taken uh, quite a long time. And this is the Royal We, because we work with several uh, local organizations as well. Uh, when you protect these lakes, there are immediate, uh, almost immediate demographic dividends, because uh, the protected lakes and the, and the black lines here uh, population grow, uh, the system is incredibly productive. Uh, so it's like having a, a bank account that grows 180% uh, every year. Um, whereas unprotected lakes uh, continue uh, the same. And this reverts into huge uh, revenues for local communities. As you can see here, um, some of these communities that were not very big uh, obtain this annual windfall of nearly $40,000 a year. And this is unheard of because most of these places have been outside the market economy. Uh, so it basically generates an uh, 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 annual uh, windfall. Uh, it strengthens the domestic economy, but also strengthens a whole range of uh, socioeconomic benefits uh, that reinforce the system. Um, and essentially, these protected lakes, they change very rapidly. So for example, if you compare a fully protected lake after a few years with an unprotected lake. The unprotected lake will be full of small fish. Uh, the protected lake, you get this true uh, trophic rewilding with all the apex predators, uh, full complement of the uh, Amazonian aquatic megafauna, including uh, pink dolphins, giant turtles, uh, river otters, um, manatees, and of course, uh, arapaima. The same thing happens uh, when you protect these fluvial beaches, of which there are many along the river. 
uh, if you compare an unprotected beach, which could be side by side with a protected beach, uh, the unprotected beach will be completely dead and defaunated. The protected beach will be full of animals, uh, teeming with animals, including all the migrant birds uh, and everything that use those beach for beach, beach nesting. And we've documented that uh, using multiple uh, techniques, uh, including sonars on the adjacent sections of the river to show that these protected beaches are essentially alive with a huge amount of action. And this reverts into a huge socioeconomic dividends to local communities, which reinforce the whole system. And that includes much better education, much better uh, health care, sanitation, um, infrastructure, uh, including communication, electrification, access to markets, and in general, uh, you know, greater happiness, more time spent with your family, etc. This also reverses the long-held problem in Brazil of rural exodus, the rural urban migration. People previously were moving to big cities where they're completely unqualified for the urban job market, uh, and they eventually they settle in uh, poor habitation, uh, the, the slums and shanty towns of big cities. Uh, and now all the adolescents and the adults actually want to stay uh, if they work within that system of co-management. So can we protect uh, these uh, sustainable development protected areas? Can, we, um, can they both sustain people uh, and nature, uh, which is this long-held debate in conservation science? And I, I hope you'll agree with me that the, the answer is a resounding yes, at least in our case. Um, but it's a yes uh, with added benefits because the whole thing actually costs very little. And I don't mean just financial costs, I mean the political costs, uh, opportunity costs, and all the other costs that could be involved uh, in uh, bringing on, deploying the intervention, and eventually meeting all of those objectives, the environmental, the social, and the economic. And this can actually, it's a modular, scalable system that can be rolled out into other areas. In fact, this is already happening. The Arapaima Management Program alone is already protecting something like 12 million hectares of floodplains uh, in the state of Amazonas alone. That's just one state of the nine in the Brazilian Amazon. And the turtle management program is being rolled out and growing uh, rapidly. In terms of uh, this award, what are we planning to do with this award? We're dedicating 100% of it to Instituto Juruá. That's our nonprofit conservation organization in Brazil that is now doing uh, a lot of this work. And there are 10 mandates within this uh, uh, mission statements, if you like, uh, within this um, uh, NGO, which you can see here, I'm not going to repeat them, but they look a bit like the sustainable development goals. Uh, so essentially, we're going to be able to uh, work with more communities, protect more beaches, protect more lakes, and essentially grow the program and eventually export that to other river basins uh, elsewhere. Uh, and I'd just like to acknowledge our partners, not just local partners, but universities, uh, and everybody else who works with us. So thank you. First of all, let me shake your hand. Congratulations. It's a fantastic thing to have won this Plumtree uh, Prize. Uh, for, um, also, can we have your co-worker stand up? Where is yeah, he? Uh, Straight Joan, from the Amazon. Joan, do you want to get up? Do you want to stand up? <laughs> That arapaima is a f big fish. They used to grow up to three and a half meters. We don't have those big specimens anymore, but uh, in our river basin, they're getting up to about two and a half now. Yeah. Wow. So if you've got areas where no use of natural resources is permitted, what does that mean for the local population? How can they benefit yeah. if no, uh, you know, there's complete conservation? So in fact, uh, none of the areas where we operate are closed off to local subsistence uh, uh, communities or semi-subsistence communities. Uh, so the, 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 key, the key thing in the whole 
um, no-take system is that it excludes commercial fisheries, ex excludes commercial harvesting of turtles, and that generates demographic dividends that everybody benefits from, including the commercial fishermen. Um, but, you know, so there is a lot of engagement uh, and the, all those socioeconomic benefits that I, I spoke about uh, essentially reinforce the whole commitment uh, for uh, conservation. And these people are there 24 by 7 all year round. Um, and they are the best place to guard and protect their own resources. Fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much. And the next time you come, bring us an Arapaima. <laughs> <laughs>